Here we are. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another Rugby Player Reacts to the 2020 NFL Draft video. I'm excited guys. It's taken me probably about three weeks since this draft was actually on. Yeah, it's been about three weeks. April 23rd. Today is the 9th of May. Probably about two and a half weeks. And, uh, well... In that time, all I've done is become more and more excited to see where these college players land and what teams I'm going to have to follow this coming season. So with that being said, guys, we're here. Picks number one to five. Commissioner Goodall. I think that's his name. Goodall? Goodrell? Goodall. Roger Goodall. Let me check that. Roger Goodall. There he is. Okay, so this year was a virtual draft. The very first virtual draft ever performed, I believe, due to the coronavirus lockdown, which we've all been in. Like I said, I haven't watched anything, I haven't seen any clips, nothing, so I'm interested to see how they, quite interested to see how they conducted it. So, without further ado, here we go, pick number one, I already know who it is. I know who pick number one and pick number five is. Apart from that, that's it. So let's get into it, guys. We've got three brand new picks that I have no idea who they are. I think Chase Young is going to be in the top five. I think Jonathan Taylor is going to be in the top five. I know that two is going to be in the top five. And I think that one of those massive linemen are going to be in the top five. Or possibly a cornerback. You know what? Why am I even thinking about this? Let's watch. I've been up and working till the morning, yeah. Yeah, they've been sleeping now, I swear they storming, yeah. Yeah, and I swear I'm cooking like a foreman, foreman. Uh, and my foreman jumping like it's Jordan on my way. Broom, broom, tell him I'm my lane. I've been praying. Yeah, yeah, gotta say this thing, I'm the same. I don't need another person telling me. Draft this way is a new experience for all of us, but some things remain the same. Is that right? First, the hugs. Sharing that special moment with a player when he is selected is a big highlight for me. My body won't miss those great big bear hugs, but I sure will. Instead, we'll find other ways to have fun virtually. Second, I will miss the interaction I have with our fans over these three days. It's a draft tradition and one that I genuinely enjoy. Let's hear from you right now. Oh, come on, guys. You can do better than that. Let's go. Oh, straight hand. Come on, let's go. Come on, you guys can do better than that. All right, keep it coming. Wow, even the virtual booze are good. Yes, I can hear you from my basement, what so keep it going. What was that about? What the hell was that about? Were they meant to be booing? Lastly, the best part of the draft is that it restores hope and generates optimism. What the because fuck? Because every team gets better through the draft. So good luck to every team, and let's get it started. It's now my honor to announce that the first ever virtual NFL draft is officially open. The Cincinnati Bengals are on the clock. The first pick in the 2020 draft. This is just exciting. Cincinnati. We've got the Washington Redskins, the Detroit Lions. Three teams that I didn't hear a lot of last season. The Cincinnati Bengals select Joe Burrow, quarterback, LSU. And there you see Joe with mom and dad, and you have to wonder what's going through his mind right now. Remember, when he entered the transfer portal, he said one more time he wanted to go to Nebraska, and Scott Frost, the coach, said, is he better than what we got? Uh, the answer is yes. Hey, Boog, a lot of people have asked me why did he make that big transition from 18 to 19. It wasn't just the system. He got there late before that 18 season. So it's the third consecutive Heisman Trophy winner that got the first pick overall. Yeah, it's to be expected. I guess it depends. It all depends whether that team that's got the first pick actually needs a person in your position, though, doesn't it? He didn't get a chance to get comfortable, and he had a little rust. He hadn't played a lot of football in three years, but what we saw this year was outstanding. How about the field vision, the awareness? You read the safety, vacate, go towards the middle of the field. You've got a vertical... Actually, guys, what am I doing? Hold on a sec. Ah, I knew this would come in handy. Harrison, my boy, sent me this jersey alongside another one. A Russell Wilson one, to be honest, which I'll pull out as soon as the Seahawks come on the clock. We're good now. Justin Jefferson from the slot. You take that all day long. He identifies, he attacks, and he drops his ball beautifully in the bucket. How about working in the middle of the field? Anticipation and ball placement. Actually, oh, <laughs> it's the first time I've focused on the ref 
ever in the last two years, and it's because I thought that this ball was going to hit the ref right in the face. Watch this. Oh, beautifully in the bucket. <laughs> the ref sees it. He's like, oh, interesting. Working in the middle of the field, anticipation and ball placement doesn't get better than that. And then the toughness. We've all talked about that toughness with Joe Burrow. His eyes don't drop under pressure. Hang in there. You take the big hit and deliver a strike. It right definitely on does the money. seem cool, in the middle calm, of the field. and collective. How about the pocket awareness? Climb, feel it, keep your eyes downfield, find that backside seam, and again, beautiful he, ball placement. He has talked about before that there's two different sides of Joe Burrow. There's the Joe Burrow off the football field, and there's the Joe Burrow as soon as he puts the, the helmet and the pads on. And that, that football player, Joe Burrow, is a, is a no-nonsense whilst also being cool, calm and collected, you know, success driven player. And that comes from his family. That comes from his upbringing, that comes from everything. I'd better press play. If you want to nitpick him, he played with an all-star cast of receivers, so every now and then he got away with a throw like this one that he might not necessarily get away with at the next level. But Lewis, outside of just pure top shelf arm strength, I love everything Bengals about hit coach. Girl. With the second pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, Washington Redskins select Chase Young. Chase Young, Ohio State. Ohio State. Congratulations, well, Kate. hold on a sec. Ah, that's a bit better. Chase Dream Young. Chaos in every single game that I watched, even the Clemson game, the stat sheet might not show up, but I charted five pressures in that game despite getting double, triple teamed, three step drops, getting away from him. He still impacted the game. This Washington Redskins team was last on third down defense. That'll change. With the third pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Jeff Okuda, defensive back, Ohio State. Wow. Okay. They must have, look, once again, it's, it's the position that the team needs, right? They must have needed a cornerback. Jeff Okuda. He is a guy, he's, well, he's a guy that stood out to me basically because I took his screenshot to be the picture that I used on my defensive back reaction thumbnail. So his face and his, you know, structure and his physique and the way he runs has, has stuck in my mind because he's the player that I, that I chose. Detroit Lions. And there you see the reaction in Grand Prairie, Texas, where Jeff Okuda is from. Third pick overall. Off the board. Here's what's really interesting. The top three picks in this draft, at one time or another, all played. Now, this is an interesting question. Would you rather go third pick of the draft, but to a team that you could say might not be your favorite? Or would you rather go, okay, let's say pick number 30, but to a team like... The Patriots. Let me know in the comment section below. At Ohio State, what do you like most about what you see in Okuda's This field? guy's going to get paid big. Well, Trey, I see the size and the length and somebody that is outstanding in press coverage. He wants to play physical at the line of scrimmage. We saw him do it against some of the best wide receivers in this year's draft class. He's got the fluidity to be able to open up. He can drive on the football. He can find and play the football. So I thought he was the most complete cornerback in this year's draft class. Hang on, is this guy from Ohio State? Did I just miss that? I did, he's from Ohio State. Yeah, I see the size and go. the length and somebody that is outstanding Boom. in press coverage. He wants to play physical at the line of scrimmage. We saw him do it against some of the best wide receivers in this year's draft class. He's got the fluidity to be able to open up. He can drive on the football. He can find and play the football. So I thought he was the most complete cornerback in this year's draft class, and I honestly did not think it was very close. The Detroit Lions have to get better against the pass, and this was the best option for them to get Ooh, that done. Ooh, imagine that catch. So he's going, to be able to, he's going to be able to match up quite well with the taller receivers. And what I need is a bit more light in this bitch. It's not very light in here, is it? In fact, it's bloody dark. Oh, well. In the 2020 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Andrew Thomas, tackle, Georgia. Not a surprise Giants. that it's an offensive lineman, but perhaps somewhat of a surprise that it's this offensive lineman, Andrew Thomas. 
Yeah, Trey, starting 41 games in the SEC. I don't know that I saw this guy at the combine. Played left tackle, he's played right tackle. You know, everybody had these tackles in a different order. For me, he was oh, my fourth offensive tackle, but I do feel like he has a very high floor. You know exactly wow. what you're getting with him. He's going to be able to uproot people with a oh, run bro. game, and he's going to have a firm anchor and pass protection to hold up there. I did not see elite recoverability, elite quickness, or elite athleticism. I think that they've got themselves a solid, steady player, but I thought there were better options on the board at the position at this point in time. If they were gonna he's go got a tackle. solid punch. We That's what he's got. In the 2020 NFL Draft. Oh, here we go. The Miami Dolphins like Tua Tagovailoa. Roger, you could have done a better job of that, mate. Fuck me, dead. Quarterback, Alabama. Well, there it is, which means for the first time since Kellen Moore, who is now the Cowboy offensive coordinator, threw a pass, we're going to have a left-hander who's going to throw a pass. So well, he's going to have a red shirt year anyways. Even if we draft him, we're going to sit him for a year. I think when people saw that workout, they said to themselves, well, maybe not. He, he looks really good. He looks explosive. Those are things that he was built on in college, the quickness of his feet, the ability to redirect his feet, to buy time in the pocket. Mm, I like that one. We all loved what we saw in that video, uh, but Mel, it's still a big question. What will Miami do with him? Will they try to rush him onto the field, or will they give him a year to get healthy? It's going to be interesting. Mel, it's interesting when you look at this division. I'm really, really keen to see him play, that's for sure. Now, Tom Brady no longer there. It is wide open. The Bills got their quarterback with Josh Allen. The Jets have their quarterback in Sam Darnold, and now the Miami Dolphins have their young quarterback to build the rest of their roster around. There's a lot of talk about them potentially taking a tackle here. But you don't move on from an all-pro tackle and all-pro safeties. What's that? Is that? Is that the Dolphins? You can go out and take more tackles and safeties. <laughs> and all of that so you can continue to, to build this program. It starts with the quarterback. If that is the Dolphins colors on the inside of his jacket, that's a nice touch. That's where they went. And up next, with the sixth pick of the 2020 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select. Well, that's going to be the next video, guys. I hope you enjoyed that one. Picks number one to five, there you go. Now, all, all of those teams, to be honest, all of them are teams that I don't know a hell of a lot about. In fact, I don't know, I, could, I probably couldn't name five players on any of those teams. So as we get through the first round and as we get to teams that I actually know of and I can, I guess, assess somewhat how good of a pick it is, I can't wait for that. So with that being said, I hope you've had a fantastic day. I really hope you're enjoying this series and I hope you're enjoying this lockdown period as much as possible. I really hope that you're not homeless for a start and if you've had a roof over your head and if you've had family and friends around you then I just hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope that you've taken time to appreciate what we do have in this world, appreciate the freedom that we do have and I guess most of all I hope that we come out of it better than we went in and really there's plenty of reasons why we can do that. You know, we've, all we've had is spare time. Do you know the amount of businesses that would have been built throughout this time? Do you know the amount of new YouTube channels that would have been built throughout this time? I built a new YouTube channel. Anyone out there that was ever, ever considering or thinking about creating a YouTube channel, you should have used this time wisely, created a video library of videos, done the thumbnails, learnt all you can about YouTube, and now when the world goes back to normal, what have you got? You've got a YouTube channel. Something that you can work on. This YouTube channel that I've got, it's been such a source of happiness. It's been such a source of uh, achievement for me, you know, because at the end of the day, a YouTube channel allows you to have little wins. You know, every time I publish a video, I've got a little win. Now, a YouTube channel, not only it gives you a platform, but it also allows you to just get little wins all the time. You know what I mean? And that's what going to the gym did for me. On a day, you know, any day, you can have a little win. You get in the gym, you smash a workout, that's a win. You publish a video, that's a win. You know, I, I do a day's worth of reactions. I feel so proud, I feel so, you know, content that I've, I've put all this effort into my channel and, you know, it doesn't matter whether it was a YouTube channel or business, there was, you know, there, there's been so much time and time is an asset. And it's the only asset that's always running out. Now, all I'm trying to say, guys, is this, this, this spare time that we've had throughout this, this lockdown, this nationwide isolation, worldwide isolation, we could have used. 
And I'm happy to say, I'm really happy to say that I have used it. And I just hope that you guys out there have as well. And if you haven't, well, it's not over. You've probably got two more weeks left. Okay? So if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, do it. Because I did on a fateful day about six years ago. Actually, no, it was about eight years ago now. And I've never regretted it since. All it's done is improve my self-esteem. It's given me an outlet to be creative. And at the end of the day, regardless of anything else, it's going to be my platform to the world. And that's what it is. And at the moment, I'm choosing to bring rugby and football through my platform. In future, there might be something else. But what you can always count on is I'm going to be open, honest, transparent, and unbiased. And if I am biased, I'll tell you about it. You know, you just got to be fucking honest, bro. Just be honest. At the end of the day, honesty is the best policy. And I'll see you in the next video. That was about enough talking. Sorry, guys. Peace out.